Well, welcome today to this next session of the Business Spotlight interview series. And today I'd like to welcome Neil Mackay from Money Know How Plan uh, Power Planning Services. So welcome, Neil. Thanks, Bill. Um, one of the things, maybe to start with, Neil, would you like to introduce your business and what it is that you actually do? Absolutely. Look, uh, money know-how. Everyone asks, what's a power, plan, a power planning business? It's essentially we outsource, we're an outsource service for financial advisors where we help them write their statements of advice. Mm -hmm. So write the advice documents. Um, they provide us the information. The team write the documents. We, re we re review it purely to make sure that it, the advice is then being sent to clients on a in a compliant way. Um, so we, we, there's no, a number of power planning services around, um, but I suppose we offer a bit of a unique service because of our the, the team that we've got and mm -hmm. uh, the experience that comes with the team. Right, fantastic. And, and how long have you been doing this for now? Uh, power planning. Uh, we we started doing this back in two thousand eleven. So we're we're now what are we? Yeah, eleven years on. Um, wow. And 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 started really started doing that as a as a side sideline um, yep. as, as a way of marketing for my own financial planning business. Right. Yes. Yep. Because um, I had a few few beliefs, and I just wanted to see what advisors were doing across the country. Mm -hmm. So I started writing a, the, the documents for them um, and then really ramped that up in 2017. Right, yep. And uh, to, and built it to where it is today and, and continues to grow. Yeah. So, you know, when I think about what's gone on in the financial planning industry, particularly over the last two or three years, yeah. Um, what changes have you actually seen in that respect and, and what impact has that had on your business? Um, well, the impact has really in, enhanced the growth side of the, the business. Mm. Um, you know, with the with the Hain Royal Commission, um, a, a lot more onus on the advisor to make sure that their their advice is acting in the client's best interest. All of that, all of the, the legislative changes in around those. Yes. That, um, we've now got the code of ethics in place for financial advisors. So there's there's a lot more lot more onus on the advisor to get to to really look at the advice. And um, and I suppose where it's enhanced our business as a power planning service is it's you know, because we look at the compliance side yes. of, of the document. It's making sure that you know our clients are are then being compliant through their process. Yeah, yeah. Uh, look, a, a valuable service. And I, I, I imagine that just trying to uh, stay on top of all the changes that are, you know, are going on within the industry, you know, the, those legislated tra uh, changes. Tell me, Neil, how do you and your team actually stay on top of that? Um, a lot of professional development, Bill. Um, we, we, we look at... Uh, Everything that's coming out, well, I'm checking the legislative changes on a regular base in, in, in multiple roles that I, because I do some compliance work as well. Yes. Uh, as part of the, the money know how business. So maintaining that and, and keeping the team on top of all those compliant changes is, it's, it's onerous, but it's necessary. And it's, yeah. um, and, and look, it will be a forever changing. Uh, beast uh, as we move forward because we as we as as advice starts to move from that industry base to a profession mm -hmm. we're, we are seeing a lot of changes and, and a lot of um, requirements and a lot of new entrants coming coming into into the, this this industry yeah no that, that, that's fantastic and and you know i it's a very valuable service that you actually offer, particularly for those people that are within your industry. And uh, yeah, so well done. Um, tell me, did COVID have much of an impact on, on your business? Did COVID? Um, 
the the only impact COVID had was that it, it created more more opportunity and more growth. Yes. Um, the, the the joys of I, I suppose working from home in in an in an industry that uh, we're an outsourced service. So the 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 team that I've got is spread. Right. Um, we're not all sitting in one office. We're sitting in multiple um, places of, mm -hmm. um, of work, and, and we all work from home. Yep. Um, so it's so the the COVID hasn't really impacted the business from stopping it. It's actually had an impact on the on the growth side, um, as advisors require. You know, advisors were finding they needed um, they had more clients coming to them. Seeking mm. advice. Yep. Um, you know, cash flow. Cash flows are, are a concern right now for for a lot of people, and and, yep. and people are seeking advice for that. So, yep. um, it's probably enhanced the business more than it uh, was detrimental. Yeah. No. That that that's great. So, what's been your biggest learning as a business owner? In that journey in business, for you personally, your biggest learning. The bit, oh, that's a great question. Um, there's been many. Um, look, and, and at the end of the day, it's it's about staying true to yourself, having having that belief in what you're doing. Yes. And and, and providing that belief around the team. So the service that you provide and and the communication that is a big key part of that that service is a critical aspect of maintaining great relationships yes um, with your clientele maintaining you know really important relationships with with your staff keeping them focused keeping them challenged um, and 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 I suppose the biggest learning for me or one of them has been to keep keep your staff involved in in building your business as well yeah absolutely critical. Yeah, you know, it's it, it's it's your team that builds the business, not necessarily you. Absolutely. And yeah, you know, if I if I can steal uh, one of Richard Branson's lines, is look after your team better than you look after your clients. Yeah. Uh, because it will be the team that actually grows the business for you. So yeah, no, that that's um, great insight. Um, Neil, how do you find inspiration every day? to keep doing what you do every day? How do I find that inspiration? Um, I, love, I love helping people, Phil. Yep. And, it's, and, it, and it really is, I suppose I have a lot of belief around what good advice is. Yes. And I, and I love coaching the advisors that we work with mm -hmm. in better understanding that, that whole process and, and understanding that advice is not just a product. And it is all about the individual and their journey. Yep. Um, and and I love and I love the fact that I'm on a journey with not only my staff but with with the with our clients as well. So yes. we're really wanting to help grow them as individuals and as and as a business. Um, and that's my inspiration. Is is there's so much work to be done in the field. Yes. Um, yep. That that gets me up every day and. This this is not a job. This this is a passion. Yeah, yeah. No, that's fantastic. So, what would you say to anybody that's thinking about going into business? What would be your words of wisdom? Be passionate about what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Be be focused. Do your research. Yes. Under understand understand the business you're going into. Understand your, your the markets. Do your analysis. But be passionate and really set your goals. And once you start to achieve those goals, reset them and keep setting the bar a bit higher. Absolutely. Uh, great words of wisdom. Thank you, Neil. Um, I couldn't agree with, with those words uh, anymore. And so the question here is, if you were to start your business again, what would you do differently next time? <laughs> um, build the build. Go go and find the, the right team and build it. Yep. Um, with with and really build the team out first. 
Okay. Yeah. So, so just e sorry, just expanding on that team then. Yep. Specifically, what team members would be important? The team members that have got the, not only the skill set, but but the passion to provide that high level of service. Yes. And really make sure that you've got the right people coming into the business, treat them well, give them give them the the authority to explore themselves and grow within themselves. Yep. So when you say explore within themselves, um, it, is what you're talking about here a, an element of risk taking? Oh, absolutely. Uh, and it's it, it's it's really yes, it's an element of risk taking. But it's also an element of um, providing providing those staff members and from the ground up because probably the one thing I didn't do, I I held on for too long doing things myself. <laughs> the old and, the old Superman. Yeah, yeah the old though. Superman. So where you know if you and and what you find is you bring the you bring your team along the journey with you. Mm. And you, and they participate in that journey. Um, the rewards for them, as as much as it is for you, yes. is is their personal growth, their personal development, and you know they don't tend to they tend to stick. Absolutely. Uh, yep. So Neil, you know, just going back to you, you said that you felt that you held on too long with that Superman cave. What impact did that actually have on the business? And then also, what impact did that have on you personally? Um, it meant that you weren't, from a business perspective, you actually weren't getting the, the work out in the, in the set timeframes. Mm -hmm. um, majority of the time we were, but it meant, what it meant for me personally was it, I was finding I was working 70 hours, 60 to 70 hours a week um, and burnout burnout was a real a real issue. Yes, yeah. And look, I, I see that that happened a lot with uh, small business owners is uh, not learning to let go quick enough, um, trying to do everything themselves, you know, a little bit of the nobody else can do it as well as I can syndrome. Um, you know, the one, one of the four ways to leverage in business is actually through people and education. Yeah. And, you know, this is where, you know, you've got as a business leader, business owner, business leader, you really need to trust your people to be able to do the job. So, no, great, great learning. Absolutely. Um, Neil, do you have any favourite sayings or quotes that help keep you focused on a daily basis. Um, no, no, no real quotes or sayings. I, I suppose it's been um, a, a lot of that focus each day is is around setting those goals, writing yeah. out, write, writing out on what it, what what are the what are the three critical things you've got to do in, yes. the, in the day. Yeah. Um, and and really ticking, it's really ticking off. These are the things I must do, mm -hmm. um, and that that maintains your focus. Yeah, there's there's no real quotes or sayings or individuals that I would say, do I really follow that person? Um, right. it, it's just something I've developed over a long period of time. I suppose my my sporting uh, background from a coaching perspective comes into play. Um, and, and I suppose with any team, you know, we, we focus on and control what we can control. Yes. Yep. Absolutely important. And, you know, identifying, you know, what the things are that you have to do and then prioritising them. Um, you know, that's, that's the one way to get more done in less time. Right. Yep. And, you know, I, I guess as business owners, we're always looking for more time. Always looking for more time, and it's minimising the distractions that will take away that time. Yes, absolutely. 
Um, one final question. What does the future look like and what do you see as the main challenges moving forward for you personally, but then also your business and maybe even the industry? Um, challenges for, for my business, Money Know How, is, is about, uh, it's a capacity building exercise. Mm -hmm. it's, it's finding additional team members, finding the right people to, to come into that team. Yes. Um, and as you grow, it's then having those having the right controls. That's, that's the challenge. As your team gets bigger, it creates more risk. And yep. so you've got, to, you've got to have some really good controls around who's managing what and what is, and redefining your own role. You, you keep redefining and going, what's my role now? Um, exactly. And, and that's always a challenge. It's, it's a personal challenge to go, I'm redefining myself and the, where the future for me is, I'm in that process right now. I'm redefining my, the role I play. Yep. And so I can actually build that team and, and make sure that the clients are well looked after and yep. really, really changing my role to be working more closely with the clients on a, well, how can we support you even more mm. yep. rather than, and so I'm working on the business a lot more than working in the business. In the business. And, and I love the fact that you, you know, you've said redefining your role and essentially, you know, where that comes to is what things are you going to write out of your role that you've been doing in the past that, you know, I, I guess it's delegating to somebody else that you're no longer responsible for. So, yeah, well done. Um, yeah, that's, that's a great insight. So, um, so, so sorry, just just on, on one other point you mentioned, Phil, you know, where's the future? Um, I get asked a lot, when am I going to retire? And... <laughs> And, yep. and well, let me, my, my personal belief about retirement is it's, it's actually not about giving up work. You, know, you might, so for me, the, the work is part of my retirement if in, the, in a traditional retirement yep. sense, um, but it's about lifestyle. Um, am I going to slow down? You will at some point. Um, yep. I don't see that happening for another 10 or 15 years. Yeah. Um, so I've still got another another lifetime, uh, life career, when, it, when we talk 10 or 15 years. Yes. There, there's another career in a new, in a new role for me. Yeah. Oh, look, I, I, I couldn't agree more with that, um, Neil, and, I, and I, I totally relate to it because I get asked the same question, when are you going to retire, Phil? And the answer was... Whilst I can mentally um, do what I'm doing now, uh, I'm going to continue doing that. Yes, I might wind back. It might only be two or three days a fortnight, um, but I'm going to be enjoying the lifestyle. I'm, I'm very fortunate that I can actually do what I do no matter where I am anywhere yep. in the world. And that's, that's, that, that's, that was one of the goals that I set out uh, six, five, six years ago. Right. Yes. Was was to get be structured so it didn't matter where I was in the world. I could I could do what I what I love. And yep. we've achieved that part. Now it's now it's actually the the next part is going off and doing those travels. Yes, absolutely. And and, and, and living again, that life. Yeah, that's that's where the goal setting you know really starts to play an important part. So uh, congratulations, well done, and um, yeah. I look forward to following your journey through, you know, wherever it may be. Um, so just in, in finishing up there, Neil, is there anything else you'd like to add for anybody that uh, is watching this video? Um, look, no, as I said, just be, be passionate about what you're doing, be focused, um, but most importantly, enjoy the journey. Whatever, whatever the journey is, and it will take you in different ways ways that you never thought of yep. and and, it, and there will be barriers to that journey but whatever you do enjoy just enjoy the journey because that's that's I, and I think that's what helps you get through the the difficult times great words of wisdom thank you so much Neil 
So if anybody has uh, any requirement for any power planning services, Neil McKay at Money Know How Power Planning Services in Aubrey, uh, or yep, virtually anywhere. Virtually um, anywhere. Fantastic. Thanks for your time today, Neil. Thanks, Phil. Okay. Bye now. Bye.